Hey guys, it's Damien here and I wanted to go through some of the steps I took to go from a Goose Guy S2 airframe into a one-piece print that I released to you guys just a few days ago. One of the first things I actually ended up starting with is I scanned in the frame because that was the flat, flattest part on this helicopter and I scanned those in and then I ended up taking that scanned photo and put it into an AutoCAD software, traced all the geometries as best as I could, and then I ended up using a caliper for majority of my measurements, especially the holes to make sure they were intolerant, and I ended up printing them. And what I found out is that the scanned photo wasn't as perfect as I had thought. There were, the holes were completely off, the geometry of the entire frame was way off as well sometimes it was too large uh, because when you're scanning a photo you could have a shadow effect and that's what took the longest after that i ended up disassembling the entire helicopter and slowly piece by piece i ended up drawing each part the front protector the flight controller tray the battery tray the motor mounts the airframe adapters, the boom block, the anti-rotation bracket, the tail boom, and the vertical stabilizer. So some of the parts that I ended up replicating didn't really need to have multiple pieces such as the vertical stabilizer. This comes in two pieces and that that's one of the parts that I actually ended up combining into one because I didn't seem to think that it was necessary as well as the horizontal bar that the screws go into the tail boom. So that is also part of the tail boom. And when printing the and printing and testing with a proper design for the landing skids, I realized that when you're printing them on an angle, the layers aren't as strong so that's why I ended up going with a flat skid and where you would have to heat up the corners and then form them into the landing skid shape that you have on a helicopter. Originally, when I was designing this, the goal was to just use the original hardware, but that ended up wearing it out. But the reason I was doing that is for anyone who wanted to print their parts and not have to buy any extra screws that they could use their original hardware. So on my end, I ended up wearing out my entire airframe, but for those who could just print out these parts, you unscrew your hardware from your Goose Guy S2 and you know, you, you, you use it once. But the main goal was to be able to replicate this helicopter almost one to one. Uh, so that's why I kept the frames Thin so that if you wanted to replace one of the parts that you had either damaged or needed a replacement part, you could use the original frame, print out a part, and then just pop it in there like it was nothing. So, but I ended up going to the full extent of just putting one completely together. Some of the difficult parts I had to design were the flight controller tray with alongside with the battery uh, compartment because the battery had to nicely fit in without falling out of the frame and I couldn't print the flight controller tray in a way where it had that curve to it, a nice curve to it, so I just made sure I had just enough tolerance where it would grip the battery in the airframe and then the battery wouldn't fall out. So that was one of the challenges as well as replicating the motor mount. Plastic, when you're printing with plastic, especially when you're printing out in areas that are extremely thin, there's not much material, they, there's not much support there. When it's metal, there's plenty of support. You can make it thin on an airframe like that, airframe like this, and it wouldn't really matter, but with plastic, it's not as rigid, so so you're very limited to what you can do as far as printing. In the beginning, when I was printing, I only had a Ender 3 Pro 
and that was quite a struggle because it wasn't printing as accurately as I needed to so that's why I ended up getting a Artillery Sidewinder X2 which ended up printing some of my parts in a much better way. For the rest of the parts I pretty much ended up using a caliper just trying to make sure that the, the simple parts like the tail boom block which is just a square with a set screw and I was just trying to kind of do a best estimate on where the hole location and where the geometry would fit alongside with the frames and and the tail boom is quite difficult to print because it has a very thin wall thickness so what I had to do is thicken up the wall thickness because when you're printing it, if you're printing it at about one millimeter, it just would be too thin and it would collapse. So I ended up printing the tail boom at about 1.2 millimeters. So for majority of the parts that weren't flat, which is pretty much everything besides the frames, I ended up just using a caliper to measure all the dimensions as best as I could. The difficult part in designing everything uh, relative to the frame is you don't have the exact geometry to the frame so when you're measuring out the dimensions of where the hole locations are your drawing is not fully constrained you should be constraining your drawing but I was constantly manipulating the drawing so every part I was designing I probably should have designed the piece parts first and then the frame that probably would have been an easier way of going about designing this helicopter but let's, so this was my first prototype. I ended up using, I started with PLA parts, but then slowly transitioned into PETG parts because PLA is very weak when it comes to the heat and it'll just start to deform a lot faster. So if you're flying outside, you know, you'll end up having a completely deformed RC helicopter. So I ended up sticking with using a pet G uh, plastic. Now, since I was using the original hardware, I was really trying to aim for the hole tolerances, hole tolerances to be a lot smaller so you could really press fit in the machine screws into the plastic that you shouldn't really be using, but I made it in a way where it would work. Eventually, I definitely recommend you use self-tapping screws. It is a much better option as far as assembling plastic pieces together. Now, I was always interested in mating parts and eventually getting to the point where I could mate all these parts together. So one of the first prototypes I started with is I ended up putting together a bottom frame, the frame adapter, as well as the top frame together so that I could just have that as a one piece side frame. But I still didn't like the fact that this was one millimeter thick because I tried to make sure it was a replica of the Goose Guy S2. But the more and more I thought about it, when you're 3D printing parts, they're not meant to be this thin as far as when you're trying to make this structurally stable and not as flexible because this frame is quite flexible. So I ended up completely starting from scratch, but since I already knew the dimensions of each part, I ended up starting with one part at a time. So going from this, oh geez. Try that again, that works. So, so what I ended up doing is I, I actually ended up starting with designing the entire airframe from scratch again, but I started, with the, I started with the top frame, I started to remove holes that weren't needed, and after extruding the first top piece frame, I mirrored that as well as I extruded a tail boom block. So you're pretty much drawing the dimensions of one part on top of the other, on top of the other, and you just kind of build on to the airframe itself on CAD. But the reason that this ended up becoming a lot thicker 
is I ended up removing, if no one has noticed, I ended up removing the airframe adapters from the top to bottom. So that's why I ended up thickening up the frames, which actually ended up benefiting the airframe itself because one, it is a lot easier to print, especially when you're trying to print one millimeter frames, it would not print so well from the bottom up because I'm not printing this off to the side, I'm printing this from the bottom of the airframe to the top with organic supports. So at the moment, majority of these screws are for the electronics. So let me see, pretty much for this block. So I could just fit, fit this right in with this block and it's it makes it extremely easy to take it out of the original airframe and put it onto here. So the frames ended up becoming thicker. I had to fill in some of the areas for the motor mount because there is just no need to have all that extra space and you want to make an airframe on a helicopter like this extremely rigid and the only way of doing that is filling in those spaces that a carbon fiber there it goes again uh, uh, carbon fiber airframe has because carbon fiber is extremely strong as well as metal so and I ended up finding out that the weight difference is about 12 grams at the moment from this airframe just the way it is to this airframe I believe that's about 45 grams and then this is 57 grams so about 12 gram difference but that's why there's a lot of filled in areas I also when I was cre designing this I ended up removing all the complex geometries and just made straight lines in areas that wouldn't interfere with the motor the electronics and just kind of beefing up those areas so that it would end up printing a lot better a lot smoother and a lot easier i'm constantly improving on that the last video i actually had the tolerances on the anti-rotation bracket and the the distance between the top frames were too tight and every time i tried to assemble this I ended up cracking the frame and you could probably see in that corner there there's tons of iterations that I was working with so it kept cracking the frame and I didn't realize it because I wanted to make sure it was a really good press fit in the second it's in it's you know there, there's no slop that you would have to deal with so the transition between because I still have the old frame the transition between the bottom frames and the top frames was too aggressive so what I ended up doing is I ended up thickening the transition between the top and bottom frames and those are just some things some upgrades that you have to consistently think about every time you're doing a design is what areas need to be thicker what areas need to be you know I know this might not look the prettiest but as far as 3D printing it, this is what will make a strong and rigid airframe when you're flying a RC helicopter. So as I mentioned before, the main screws that I stuck with were the bearing blocks, the set screw for the tail boom, uh, compressing the tail boom so it's squeezing that tail boom together, and of course the motor and then your landing skid but that's pretty much it so you're pretty much constantly so I started off with the top frames of the boom block removed the removed the frame adapters then I ended up adding in the bottom frame I put in the motor mount and then I ended up just adding the the flight controller tray as well as the battery tray so and I was slowly building and building there are certain features that I kept forgetting for example I forgot to put a hole here because there is a heat sink on the flight controller on the bottom of it as well as a hole on the on the battery 
so that there wouldn't be some airflow when you're flying it and cool it, it cools down the uh, battery itself so and this time I ended up just having a simple design as far as fitting the battery into the airframe because it fits it's a very tight fit it will not ruin your battery but it's it's so tight in there that you do not need that front protector uh airframe protector um to fit your cables in once once you plug it in you should be absolutely fine but yeah so that's pretty much what i ended up doing to design this one piece airframe if you guys have any questions or you want to design something similar to this on a different platform or if you have any questions on how to design something as as geometrically complex as this i would suggest starting off from the basics one piece part at a time and then get gathering all your dimensions i'm sure you could do it all at once but it definitely was a lot easier to design one piece at a time having all the dimensions that i needed and then slowly adding them on and then just making the the modifications that you need along the way i'm sure i'll have many more new iterations to come as far as this this is just the beginning i'm excited the fact that you can just print one full airframe and just plop it on and, and not have to worry about it now the amount of time it takes to actually disassemble an entire goose guy and put it back together is easily over an hour the print definitely takes a lot longer i think this print is anywhere from five and a half hours to six hours with supports and that's not even including removing the supports to this but if you have a lot of these printed on the on the back burner then and something happens to this it's just an easy four screws actually two four uh six seven screws to take out the electronics and put put a whole new airframe in so it it definitely makes replacing parts a lot easier and i'm super happy with it so I, unfortunately i still don't have my electronics i actually ended up buying it from rc wing i don't know if anybody knows that website but they were the only ones who had the servo arms that I needed and I'm still waiting for those parts. Hopefully I can get them soon so I could start testing this for you guys. And as soon as I get those parts, I will assemble the helicopter and I'll try to do my best to get you a flight test video because I'm sure this will perform outperform <laughs> this airframe by a substantial amount but if you guys like this type of content please like and subscribe thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one